today we are going to discuss about machine learning with logistic regression and to do this logistic regression we would also need to do some data wrangling data plotting and analysis and i am going to use the jupyter notebook as my ide and feel free to use any ide of your choice and as you know the first statement is always the import of modules i am going to import the pandas numpy and this time i'm going to import seaborn and matplotlib as we are going to do lot of plotting and in terms of the data i'm going to use the titanic data and the titanic data we can find it in the internet in many places and i am going to bring it from kaggle so here if you see i have imported this data from the kaggle website and here we see the data and the last few records five records and there are few columns let's uh, discuss over them a passenger id maybe that's a sequential number and the passengers who survived the titanic and if they survived that will be 1 and if they didn't survive and that will be 0 and the passenger class which is first class second class and third class passenger name and uh, their gender male or female age and sibling spouse so if it has one that means one sibling or spouse is traveling with them parch is parent and child so this uh, particular customer has two uh, maybe a parent and a child or maybe two child and then the ticket id and the fare how much they paid cabin and embarked now some of this information have some statistical value some of the information may not have statistical value for example name name may not be a factor in determining which passenger would survive and which would not on the other hand age may be a factor the gender may be a factor and which class maybe if they have a first class ticket and maybe they have access to uh, uh, stepping out earlier or some advantage so that way some of the factors or some of the features may have benefit and some features may not be the serial id or the passenger id i'm sure that may not have any relationship with passengers surviving or not so now the whether survived or not is called the dependent variable or the target variable and remaining parameter is the feature or that's the independent variable so now let's go in and analyze this data frame what we have uh, read as csv so if you see here i have this data frame by name data frame 0 and normally i read the file and i always save it in data frame 0 to show that was the file we read and this data frame uh, is um, of type data frame itself and if i pick one of the column which is name that is of type series and in that if i take one particular cell let's say name 0 that one is of type string okay so by this i am able to identify the data type of each of the objects and which will be useful for our uh, data manipulation down the line and i have this particular uh, attribute shape that tells me what is the dimension how many rows and how many columns so i have 891 Uh, passenger so or 891 tickets which is a significantly good amount of uh, ticket and there are 12 columns and here i have done describe and if you notice on a data frame when you do describe uh, the python is smart enough to identify only numerical field and it does statistical model on that so it gives the count most of them have a count of 891 uh, except for some of them 
and you can see the mean value standard deviation minimum and then they have this uh, 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 a quartile value 25 50 and 75 and the maximum value so this helps us in doing our initial analysis but down the line what we will do is we will study this more by which we can analyze uh, this data better so let me insert few more lines and here I am seeing the data type of each of this columns. So if you see, I have some integers, some objects, some float, uh, different type. And if you see the ones which are string are of data type object, and those we have to do some um, data manipulation, or we have to drop those columns. Okay, and we will see down the line what we can do for those. Now let's do some data analysis. Uh, so we are going to use Seaborn and we are going to analyze this data. And since our target variable is whether the passenger survived or not, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say Seaborn count plot. So count plot will give the count how many of them survived and how many of them did not. And if they survived, the value is one. And if they did not, the value is zero. So here you can see the blue one is um, a, a bigger number and the orange is a smaller one. So by this, we get to know that um, uh, less people survived in this ship. And uh, so this is the count plot. For the count plot, I pass the data frame as an input parameter and I say the column in the data frame is survived. So it would identify all possible values and then it would go ahead and plot it and it counts and it will plot it for us. So this is a simple count plot. And now let's do some more count plot where we are going to see parameters, let's say with a hue. Okay, so in hue, basically what happens is I am doing the same survived, but I am also passing a parameter called uh, hue parameter, and that is the gender sex. And I say, please color code it different for male and female, and I want to see the details. So the blue color is for male, and the orange is for female. So if you see more female survived, but less um, more female survived here and less uh, um, uh, females could not survive on the other hand on the more males did not survive so this is a very good plot by adding hue to that we are able to see a, the bar chart why we can see the count and we can see more details to that Okay, so now let's move on and let's add the same survived and in the hue instead of sex, let's add the class. So here if you notice, we have the hue for the passenger class and if you see uh, first class, second class and third class. So in first class, more people survived. So that's the reason the blue color is bigger on the survival side and smaller on passengers who do not survive. On the third class, if you see more people did not survive and less people survived. So looks like if you are traveling on a higher class, the odds of survival are better. So there is a statistical relationship between survival and which class you are traveling. And there is a relationship between survival and the sex. So the purpose of doing all this plot is to see is there a relationship between the dependent variable or the target variable and the independent variable. Okay, so so far we have got a good amount of information. Now let's go ahead and do some histogram. The difference between a histogram and a count plot or some other 
plot is in histogram we have okay one sec in histo let me add few more columns few more rows okay in a histogram i have only one attribute age or any other attribute and i'm able to draw the histogram so what is happening is i say data frame age and i say plot it and i say plot it in the form of a histogram so i have only one column then the system by itself makes into different buckets okay so age it buckets in uh, 0 to 10 then 10 to 20 20 to 30 and it's able to draw a histogram so what do we conclude from this histogram is the passengers who are traveling there are more passengers in the window 20 to 40 and there are less passengers on senior passengers and the uh, and the child or the young ones are less and the middle age passengers there are more passengers so we are able to see a relationship between the age and the number of passengers now let's make some study with how much fare or the price they have paid okay so if you see uh, data frame dot fare that's the column I want to plot it once again histogram so there are more passengers who have paid less than fifty dollars right and some of them have paid from fifty to hundred and some have paid even more than hundred and then there are some gaps and people have also paid more than two hundred but this one is not that prominent in terms of how it looks so if I want to rearrange this data in a different form I can and if I want to bucket them differently I can bucket them differently right now it's bucketing 0 to 50 50 to 100 but let's say I want to bucket them in three different bu three buckets within 100 so in total I want to have 15 bins so what I can do is the same uh, syntax uh, data frame fair plot histogram now I say my bin is 15 so it will divide this in 15 bins and this plot or the figure is small in size so I want to make the size big then I say figure size 12 by 6 then it's going to give me a bigger figure of size 12 by 6 so now if I run this it gives you three bins for 100 and then three more bins for 200 and it gives me in total 15 bins and the size is 12 by 6 so I'm able to get a similar information in a different uh, granularity okay so next let's go and analyze uh, sibling and spouse okay so for analyzing sibling and spouse I think the best thing would be to do a count count plot because here uh, we are going to have different we are going to have one sec uh, we are going to have different uh, x values which are the count uh, from 0 to 8 and then the count so that means uh, the passengers who have sibling spouse 0 that means they came by themselves in the ship and people with one that means either they came with a sibling or a spouse and if they have more that means they come with more people in the fly, uh, in the ship so here uh, I have this um, uh, attribute value count if I use the value count it gives me the count the numerical value itself and we don't have to guess the number from the graph so sometime what I do is I do this value count and I also do this so this when I do the count plot it gives me the feel how big is this information those kind of data and when I do the value count it gives me the actual number itself uh, so these two uh, is a good idea to go together so now in the count plot I also want to see the gender breakdown so once again we will use the hue and same count plot so if you notice in many places I use count plot with hue and when I run this 
uh, the male is once again blue color and females are orange it shows that and folks who came by themselves there are more males who came by themselves less female came by themselves and people who came as uh, with sibling and or with uh, spouse they are kind of pretty equal or close to each other so this gives us the breakdown of uh, of the passengers and those kind of stuff so now we got a good amount of idea in terms of how the data looks like but now let's see how we can cleanse the data uh, because this data is uh, having couple of holes as well and the best way to see if there are any holes in the data uh, i would say the best approach is you say data frame is null and if you say this is null it will identify do you see any value which do not have any valid values so if you see true here that means cabin this information is not there in a sample of five record we three of them don't have cabin information so if we are going to use these records for our analysis uh, this is a big challenge because if you are going to give garbage information to the model and it will prepare the model based on this and the output will not be efficient so there are two option we can find a alternate value or we can drop that column itself or better off drop the row the reason i would like to drop the row is because we have sufficient number of records so by losing few numbers a few records should not be a problem okay now before we drop we need to know how many records are there which we need to drop so for that what i can do is on the is null attribute itself method itself i have one more uh, method sum if i run this it is going to count and it's going to say there are 6 87 rows which do not have cabin detail and 177 rows do not have um, the age details okay and there is one more uh, uh, two for embarked now the challenge is or maybe that's a good thing that some records may not have cabin embarked and age so if you drop that row you are in fact dropping all of them which may be the perfect scenario let me add few more lines here okay so now if i want to see the data which has issue there are few ways to check that the one i like is first say let me show you the code first what i like is here i say um, age is null so this is going to return true or false for every row and if it is true it is going to show me the data okay so i pass the true or false array as a input to the data frame and then i display this and if you see the age here all of them is nan okay and for these uh, uh, passengers even cabin is nan though we didn't put a constraint on that here i had put the constraint only for the age okay so let's put the similar constraint for the cabin and let's see what happens when i put a similar constraint on the cabin here i see um, that all these are nan not a number but age some of them do have data some don't have data okay so it's a mixed uh, combination that Uh, some have and some don't okay so now what are our options um maybe looking this way doesn't give us sufficient detail why don't we plot a heat map when we do a heat map 
you can see information in a pictorial way and i always like the pictorial representation because we can see the data better so here if you notice um, i have um, 846 records and there are lots of cabin information which is not available some age information is not available and the remaining data is pretty good and i think here is the embark for two of them uh, embark information is not available okay so this is pretty good where you can do heat map and to the heat map you can pass the data frame and you can say show me um, show me with a uh, with a color map of green and there are different flavors of that okay uh, so this shows me and here i am passing the heat map uh, uh, i'm passing the data frame is null to the heat map okay moving on let's learn something different now let's do some box chart a box plot okay and if you see in finance and in many other industry box plot is very popular okay so here what i am doing is i am doing two plots one is box plot and one is swamp plot okay so here i am passing different parameters i am passing the passenger class age hue whether they survived or not data frame okay and similarly for the swarm plot i am passing the passenger class age survived so the remaining information is same okay so now if you look at this graph if it's green that means they did not survive if it is orange that means they did survive and the box will give you kind of a central or average information and the dots gives you for each sample point how it looks like and if you notice in the first class it looks orange color the most of the dots are orange in color this is a very good observation because most of them did survive in first class so that's the reason this is orange in color on the other hand in the third class this uh, box plot and the swamp plot if you see it is green in color the swamp plot it's it's totally green with few orange colors that means most of them did not survive in the uh, third class and most of them did survive in the first class and the second class i would say it's half and half right so this box plot and with this uh, scatter kind of scatter plot which is swamp plot combined gives you a very good feel how the data is okay so so far we uh, got uh, most of the data analysis part of it okay the next let's try to see how we can modify the data for our uh, logistic regression and the first step is working with uh, dummy variables okay so let me show you something um, okay here uh, we have linear regression so when you say a linear regression that means the target variable is a continuous variable and that variable is a uh, on a number line it can be anything okay so the example is age or what is the score in the test those kind of uh, or how, what is the income those things are very good for doing linear regression coming to logistic regression whenever the output is categorical that means it has two possible values yes or no uh, if you take the test will you pass or not 
okay or let's say in a medical test someone is going to do a uh, pregnancy test or someone is going for a cancer test does the patient has cancer or not so those are binary that means there are only two options there but sometimes there are multi level or multi class uh, uh, logistic vari uh, uh, variables for example uh, let's say you want to do a cancer test and you say the patient has low risk high risk or medium risk so it's not yes or no it's multi level so those are also uh, logistic uh, or those are categorical variable one sec i should not have put okay okay so those are categorical variable but they are not of type binary because it can it can have multiple value but we can use logistic regression for both binary and multi class both of them okay for binary variable uh, uh, if you see the theoretical part it's it's like a, uh, the logic used behind is a sigmoid curve which looks like a shape of a s and that gives you a efficient model okay now let's look into the data and if you see let me first put the code and then we can discuss over it few more lines okay here what i am doing is i am saying get dummies what does this method of panda do there are fields like sex which has two value male or female we actually don't have to write male female instead we can convert that variable into a binary variable 1 or 0 in that way what's going to happen is if it's 1 that's male if it's 0 that's female so we can convert a field of type string or character anything like this to a numerical value 1 or 0 perfect so we can convert that into a binary variable but now let's think of um embark it has value s c and q so how can we convert this into binary variable this also can be done if we are able to split them into two columns one column for s one column for c if the first column s is true then it is s if second column is true it is c if both of them are false then it's q so we don't want to add more columns than it's required so the way to do is we say get dummies and it will create three columns and then i say drop the first one then i'll have only two right so that is a a uh, very good feature in python that we don't have to write all this code python itself will do it for us okay so let me execute this and we can go over it one more time so if you see i have this pandas method get dummy i am passing the data frame to that and i am saying in the column p class sex embark which don't have the appropriate values i want to convert them into dummies and because we are going to have uh, columns more than what it's required i am going to drop the first one and then if you see here i have p class 2 and 3 so the first one is missing which is good in sex i have male female is missing perfect in embark i have q and s and i think the other one was c let's confirm yes c as in charlie so that's missing which is perfect so this is very good uh, uh uh code which is get dummies you can pass all the columns 
and the data frame and you can say drop first it will drop all the columns which are not required even the source column and one extra column um, if you see uh, the alternate way for this would be we ourselves write the code for this and that would take you uh, at least 10 more minutes okay now that we have our data but still if you notice I have name which is not required I have passenger ID. I think there may not be any statistical relationship for people surviving. And I have ticket which is all mixed up strings, character, uh, everything uh, which is character and numerical. So we want to drop those information. So for that what I can do is I can say uh, data frame drop passenger id name ticket cabin drop the column in place equal to true that means i want to do it on the data frame itself i am not returning that where you can save on to something else so i am going to modify the same memory location so in place is equal to true and then i say um, drop na in place equal to true so now drop NA will drop the columns which are not required or which have a NAN value and uh, drop columns will drop the column itself. So the first one will drop the columns which are not required. Second one will drop the rows which have NAN value. So now if you see our data is prepared well and we can look at the data whether all the columns are of type numerical so if you see all of them are type integer float int perfect this is how it should be which our uh, logistic regression can understand and let's also confirm that there is no null value and for that we can do data frame is null sum when i do perfect all of them are having valid values which is what we want now let's just do a sample head function and see how the data looks like and if you see here uh, all numerical values survived which is our dependent variable the first column and these are all the independent variable which i am going to use to predict this so our goal is to see is there a relationship between survived and remaining columns and our regression model logistic regression model is going to do that okay before we do this we have good amount of data and i want to go in this data and see whether one sec let's check at the shape of this so if you see the shape i have 714 records right i have 714 records and i'm going to check um, how we can take this records and prepare the model and also test it so for this what we should do is we should train our model and also test it i can use all the data for preparing the model or i can split the data in two parts and use one part for training and one part for testing okay so this is very interesting so if you notice here let me execute this and insert few lines as well oh so here there is error message x is not defined okay before we do that let's define what is x and y so insert a line okay so i want to define my x x is my independent variable and that is all the columns except for the survived so what i say is data frame one subtract or drop or remove survived column so i say axis equal to column 
and my output variable y which is my target is here data frame dot survived so i have that now what i am going to do is i am going to uh, use the train dress split uh, this is part of sk uh, learn uh, model selection and here i take this train test split i feed x and y as input and i say my testing size is 0.25 that means 25% of the data will be used for testing and 75% of the data will be used for learning or preparing the model okay so i call this learn an actual data which is used for testing so my x learn and my y learn is here and my x actual data which i am going to use for testing and y actual uh, data which i am going to use for testing the reason i call them actual is down the line we are going to predict y as well so then i want to check what is the difference between the actual y and the predicted y so that's the reason i named it actual and the learn because our model is going to learn uh, and using this x learn and y learn data and that's the reason i split it this way now um, this random state if you use the random state the benefit is even you want to repeat the test each time it may give different values so you want to feed the same random c to start with you can do that uh, not a big deal and it may be useful sometime that you want to use this while testing you want to feed the same seed or you want to feed a different seed uh, for random number generation uh, like otherwise um, uh, it, and there is not much application to this random state okay now let's see how the x learn looks like so this is how the x learn looks like it has around 535 records right and if you see my x actual is 179 so the testing i'm going to do on a smaller set and that too as per this 25 percent so 75 percent of the data is here and 25 percent of the data is here right so that's how i am splitting it and now is the first step where we are going to prepare our model okay and to prepare our model we have to go to the module sk learn and linear model logistic regression we import that okay and after i import it i am saying linear reg uh, uh, logistic regression model is equal to logistic regression so this is my model which is for logistic regression and i feed my learning x value and y value as input and i prepare my model and now my model is trained it knows how to behave because it has learned from the data and now that it has learned the data we can predict any value okay so these are the attributes of the model and now we are going to do prediction so now we have the x actual data i feed that to my model and i say predict the y value and it's predicting here and now if i execute this my y predict is going to have the predicted y value so now that i have predicted y value i can go ahead and do some analysis how good is my model so i can say out of so many uh, possibilities how many time i got accurate or right answer how many time i got wrong answer um, how many time I was supposed to be right and I got wrong and all those kind of combination once I say all this kind of combination there is something called confusion matrix 
we have to use that okay so before i go into this code and the logic let's look at this graph this will tell us what a confusion matrix is so we have two axes y axis and x axis in the x axis i have predicted that means i am making a prediction whether um, the passenger is going to survive or not in reality we have the value y actual we can using that we know in reality whether they survived or not so with this we can make four possible combination okay so let's look at the diagonal the first one here which is the dark green okay this dark green is called true negative that means we predicted that passenger will not survive and our prediction was correct so it is true and negative now let's look at this this one this is called true positive that means we predicted passenger will survive and actually they did survive so this is positive and also true so it is called true positive so so far we looked into true condition where it was true negative and the true positive that means they were predicted accurately when it was supposed to be uh, survived we said they will survive and when we said they would not survive it they did not survive now let's look at the false scenario that where we fail to predict accurately in this there are two kind false positive and false negative what is false positive that means my model said that the passenger will survive but my prediction was false so that is called false positive and false negative is my model said that the passenger will not survived but it was a false prediction in reality they did survive so this is the four combination true positive true negative false positive and false negative with this we are able to say how good is my model so the diagonal ones the dark green and the, the solid green is the one Uh, which is our good one and our model efficiency we can add this and we can say that okay so if you look at this logic here uh, what i am doing is i am creating a group i give these names and then i am doing the count and i am calculating the percentage i am putting all this into label and then i am creating a confusion matrix heat map and i am displaying it i am adding x label and y label as actual and predicted so that's the logic here uh, using uh, confu uh, 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 like sklearn matrix confusion matrix i am able to draw all these things okay and um, now uh, looking more into this how did we get into Uh, all this calculation or how do we calculate the accuracy of the model okay for calculating the accuracy we can manually calculate it or we do have a method for that itself it's called accuracy score and when i do the accuracy score i have to feed my y actual and y predicted and the system will take that take the diagonal numbers which is uh, 98 and 42 and it will divide by the all of them sum of all of them and that turns out to be 78 percentage okay so this is my uh, accuracy of my score now for all of this we can so basically we have predicted for lot of different passengers we can figure out our model that how successful our model was we can predict the probability itself if you notice the sum of if you are odds of predicting it right is high then odds of uh, going wrong is low they add up to 1 maybe it was not required to have two uh, values displayed they could have survived with one because they always add up to 1 
so here with the model for every passenger we are able to see the odds of success okay uh, there is one more thing uh, a classification report uh, which is a good one in classification report we can see how good our model is and we can see many other statistical parameters okay so look at this sk learn metrics has this classification report uh, when you uh, print that classification report it tells you uh, these detail what is your precision or recall f1 score how good the model is and the support so if you see uh, 112 and 67 that is actually when you add uh, 112 is how many passengers survived and how uh, is you no know, how many passengers did not survive how many passengers survived when you add these two it add up to uh, 179 and these are weighted average macro average you do a simple average and those kind of stuff uh, so basically looking at this f1 score and precision we can say how good the model is and 80 percent or 75 percent is a very good model okay now if you want to see some of the attributes of this model uh, we can uh, see that as this is a linear model it is like a, a straight line equation y equal to mx plus c where uh, y intercept is coming from this attribute called intercept underscore of the model and the coefficient uh, comes from the model co coef underscore and you are able to get see all these details so this is like a straight line where you have multiple independent variable each of them have a coefficient and then you have one y intercept and summation would give you the final output of your logistic regression okay so finally let me add one more last statement and in this statement I am going to show you um, uh, like there are different ways we can uh, calculate error or score on how good the model is so you have mean square error that means you calculate y actual y predicted and between that you calculate the square of error the difference and then you take a mean value or you can do r2 score or you can do the model score and that gives you these values and uh, um, one more last thing is uh, all x variables are also called independent variable and in data science world we call it as feature variable and y variable is called also called dependent variable or a target variable okay so with this we were able to uh, um, demonstrate a logistic regression we took in the data we analyzed the data we did the plotting and then we did the uh, 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 split of data as learning and testing and then we did the linear regression logistic regression model and after that we were able to predict and then we saw the accuracy of the model itself uh, so with this I am done for this video and I thank you for watching this video and if you like this video I would request you to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to press the bell button for channel updates. Thank you.